Praise the Lord, everybody. It's a good, good to have each and every one of you with us today in our service, our family worship time. Good to have Brother David Connie's family with us. It's just good to have family. Sometimes it's just good to have family. Amen. And uh, we're just grateful to have you. Sorry for the air conditioning, but uh, we'll get through this with fans and act like the air conditioning's working. Amen. Praise God. Amen. But if you'd stand with me today, we want just to invite the presence of the Lord into this place. Where there's joy, where there's presence of the Lord, there is joy unspeakable. Amen. There's joy at the right hand. Pleasures forevermore. In His presence. His presence makes the difference. Glad that you're here. Glad that I'm here. But we want His presence here. Because through His presence and through His Spirit, He can work in our lives. Amen. Draw us closer to Him. Draw us closer to each other. Amen. So let's just invite His presence into this place. Heavenly Father, we love you today. We thank you for each and every one that's here. And we're just asking for your presence to be in this place, God. Lord, that you would come down. You, were, you said where two or three are gathered in your name, that you would be in the midst of them. Lord, you said that we can enter into your gates, God, with thanksgiving into your courts with praise. So we're going to do that today because, Lord, we need your touch. We need your word. We need your direction. We need your guidance today, Jesus. And so, Lord, we just ask that you would move mightily in this place today, Lord, as we offer up our praise and our worship. In Jesus' name, amen. I have found his grace is all complete. He supplies every need. Oh, what I sin and learn at Jesus' feet. I am free and free. Oh, it is joy unspeakable and full. 
bless your name today. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me.
the great I am, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. You are worthy, Jesus. There is all power in heaven and earth in that name, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God sent his son. They call him Jesus. He came to
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, because he lives. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, let's worship him right now. Let's begin to thank him. It's just because he lives I can face tomorrow. It's because he lives. Oh, fear is gone. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we thank you today, Lord, that you are alive, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the death, burial, Lord, and the resurrection, God, that you rose from the grave today. We thank you, Jesus, Lord, you came down and you loved us, Lord, so much, God. We thank you, Lord, for the sacrifice that you gave us. Thank you, Lord, for the freedom, Lord, that you have given us today, God. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise and all the glory today. For you are so worthy, Lord, of it all. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. I have a couple of prayer requests here. Amen. We're praying um, for those who are not here today. Amen. Those that are still out with sickness or they're out with another situation, amen. I don't have all the information, but God does. He sees right where they're at, amen. We're praying for those that they would be encouraged today, that they would be healed so they can come, amen, get back into the house of God, amen. It's really hard when you get away for a while. It's hard. It's so hard to live without getting into the presence of God. It's hard about, without being in the family of God. Amen. Hallelujah. We're praying for them today. Amen. We're praying for the city of Kaiser this month. Amen. We're praying for God to touch that city. Amen. We're going to be doing an outreach there soon. So please, please pray for that outreach, that doors would be open, hearts would be open to receive God's word today, that hungry hearts would be open today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Our prayer focus for this month is fathers. Amen. Today I want to pray that God would give the wisdom and guidance to lead their families today. Amen. They need guidance. Amen. They need God to lead them. Amen. That we would pray that the Holy Ghost would lead them. Amen. Amen. Praying that they would be led, amen, this generation right now, that they would be given the wisdom to deal with situations that are sometimes so, so hard for us to even comprehend. Amen. That they would just be, that they, that we, that they would just right now be led, and that they would have a love for their family. There would be such a strong love for fathers in their own families today. Amen, amen. If you have a need that you were not able to give to me, you can take it to God. Amen. But if you have a special need that you would like to come up and be anointed for, prayed for, you can come up. We will pray, amen, and that God will touch you today. Whatever it may be, whatever need you have, amen, there's nothing impossible for God. There's nothing too hard for God. He will touch you today. Amen. If you have something, just give it to him. He's here. He's ready, ready to touch you. He's ready to take that away from you today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's take these needs to God today. Lord, we worship you today. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your spirit that is here right now, God. We thank you, Lord, that you are here. We are so thankful, Lord, for your love, God, that you loved us first, God. We thank you, Lord, for giving us, Lord, your mercy, your grace today, God. Oh, we thank you, Lord, oh, God, what you are doing, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. We ask you, Lord, right now for these needs, God, for those who are not here today, God. Oh, that, Lord, you would touch them right now. Oh, Lord, we are praying right now for healing, Lord, upon the upon their bodies right now, Lord, that you would touch them, Lord. If there is a sickness, that it would be gone in the name of Jesus. That, Lord, they would be healed right now, that you would begin to strengthen them, begin to encourage them right now. Lord, whatever situation, Lord, they are dealing with, God. Oh, Lord, we are praying right now that you would go, Lord, and fight for them, Lord. Whatever it is, Lord, that you provide for them, Lord. Touch them right now, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. Oh, Lord, we are praying right now for the city of Kaiser, God. Oh, Lord, we are praying, oh, Lord, that, that Lord, you would draw, Lord, the people to you, God, with hungry hearts, 
God. Oh, Lord, draw them to you today. Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus, for what you're going to do in that city, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray for fathers today. Lord, we ask you, Lord, today that you, that you would, Lord, give them wisdom today, Lord. Oh, Lord, let your spirit guide them and lead them, oh, Lord, to, to lead their families, Lord. Oh, Lord, to be, Lord, the man of the house, God, that they would to lead them, Lord. Oh, Lord, as, it, as, you, as you would have them, Lord. Lord, that they would be touched today. That, Lord, they would begin, oh, Lord, to, to, be, to be encouraged today right now. Oh, that, Lord, your families would be blessed, Lord, because they are leading them, Lord, that the fathers are leading them according to your word. Thank you, Jesus, for the fathers today. We are so thankful, Lord, for fathers today. Oh, Lord, we pray, Lord, right now, Lord, oh, Lord, for revival, Lord, in Salem, God. We are praying, Lord, believing, Lord, that you are going to touch this city, that, Lord, you are going to touch this church, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your promises today. We thank you, Lord, for your healings today. We thank you, Lord, for the victory today. Hallelujah. Let's praise God right now. Let's give him a, let's give him a hand clap. Let's, let's praise his name, for he is so good. He is so great today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated right now as Brother Chantry comes. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Amen. Let's get an announcement. Uh, next Thursday at mm -hmm. 7 o'clock is prayer, 730 Bible study. Uh, I will be preaching, so uh, pray for me and because uh, I'll probably need it. Amen. And then next Sunday at 2 o'clock is Sunday school, 2.30, family worship, amen. And just reminder, reminder uh, next month, family conference will be upon us. Before we know it, it will be in Hillsboro. And uh, I believe that's going to be all the announcements for right now. And so let's stand. Uh, remember, we're going to do Mother's Memorial, a.k.a. we're trying to be a giver. It's uh, bee-themed. And uh, here's a fun fact about bees. If a swarm or the hive is aggressive, the beekeeper goes to the queen bee and kills it and replaces it. I never knew you could genetically modify a bee or a swarm or anything like that. So there's your fun fact. Um, it's not very fun for the queen. But, you know, I guess she should have learned to chill out a little more in life. But anyway, so if you have your mother's memorial offering, please put it in the beehive. And then if you have your tithes and offering, put it in the plate. And let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, Lord, bless people that give. Bless my hundred for in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's mark. I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me.
the joy of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. The joy of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That we can enjoy it today. Amen. As it works in our lives. Amen. As it ministers, as it directs us. What a wonderful plan God has. Amen. To be a part of our life. To thank the King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. That created all things. Wants to be involved in your life. Because he cares that much about you. He wants to be a part of your every day. Amen. That's just, that, that just blows my mind. Because I don't know any leader in the world today that wants to be a part of my world. But the King of Kings, the most important one above all, does. What a Savior. What a God. What a God he is. Amen. 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 Well, it's so good to have each and every one with us today in that new life. Amen. I said it earlier, but I want to say it again. It is so good to have Brother David Carney's family with us today. And I'd go down the na and name every one of you, but, but uh, in case I forget one, because sometimes up here I, I know my memory fails me. Amen. But it is good to have, amen, each one of you with us today and having the little guys with us today. And what a wonderful time we had yesterday with the family. And uh, just to know, you know, you want to know how small the world is? Ashley's husband was born in Palmer, Alaska. Palmer, Alaska is where I graduated from. Dad started, we pastored a church there for seven years in Palmer, Alaska. It blew me away when he said he was born in Palmer. I go, no. He was born in Alaska. I go, where? <laughs> and I just knew it would be Anchorage. Because everybody's born in Anchorage when it comes to Alaska. He said, Palmer, no way. I know where Palmer is. Graduated, went all my high school years there. We spent seven years there, amen. And, and I was able to describe the church and where the church building was. And he knew right where it was. He knew all where I was talking. So, but that's how small the world is. Just awesome, amen, how God connects lives. And now he's living in North Dakota. Well, I've got a brother that lives in North Dakota. I've got a brother that lives in Minnesota, too. Brainerd. Brainerd, Minnesota. I didn't even know there was a place called Brainerd, Minnesota until my brother moved there. But he pastors there in the church there in Brainerd. Amen. Wow, what a world. What a God. Amen. If you have your Bibles, amen, with the help of the Lord, I want to just uh, have a few comments today. Amen. Psalms 103, I'm sure you've never read it, it's okay, I'll help you a little bit with at least five verses of it anyway, Psalms 103, it reads, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from dest destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. I want to preach for a few moments today, and somebody says amen a few mo moments, Pastor, amen, because it's warm in here, amen. But I want to preach with the help of the Lord, forget not his benefits. Forget not his benefits. Would you pray? Lord, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for your word today. I thank you for each one that's here, God, both with us uh, in person and on live stream, God. I pray, Lord, that your spirit, God, would reach each heart, God, in a special way. God, to remind us of your wonderful benefits, to remind us of what you have done for us and are doing for us, God, from day to day. Lord, in your name, help us not to forget. Help us, God, Lord, to remember all that you do for us. Uh, God, in your name we pray. We give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. You may be seated. As long as you say amen every once in a while. Amen. Just let me know you're still awake. No, I'm just kidding. Amen. But, uh, but it's good to have each and every one of, us, every one of you with us today. It saddened me this past week. Something went by, a date went by that for the most part I never even 
would have never known something happened on that day by, the re by media, by our world, by, by the, uh, I shouldn't say our world, but the United States of America. Just seeing that that date just came and went and, and like uh, nothing really happened that important and, and we just continued on and, 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 you know, after all, we're all concerned about, you know, our day-to-day -day life. We've got a busy schedule. We've got places to go and people to meet and, and, uh, and, and, uh, and all that, events to be a part of. And, and so who cares? You know, uh, uh, it doesn't really matter. It just seems that uh, uh, we have forgotten the many lives that have been given for our liberty and our freedom in America. This past week, on June 6th, we should have been celebrating 80 years of one of the most important military engagements that this world has ever known. On June 6th, 1944, we call it D-Day. The invasion of Normandy. If you're really into it, you would have called it Operation Overload. 7,000 vessels, 195,000 naval personnel, 133,000 landing military, 24,000 airborne troops, eight nations combined together to invade a place called Normandy, to take back a world that was being destroyed by Nazism. 10,300 men gave their life that one single day. 10,300 men laid their life down that day so that we could be free. So that we could gather in a hot church house on a Sunday afternoon to worship the name of Jesus Christ so that we could go to and fro today. Many of you will, ha will leave here in a vehicle and you could go anywhere in America you want. There's not going to be, unless you go over the speed limit, you might get in trouble for that. But for the most part, you can go anywhere in what we would call the lower 48. i got to throw that in there. I just met somebody from Palmer, praise God. The lower 48, do you want to go today? Why? Because men laid their life down. Paid the ultimate price that a man can pay his own life. It was through the, these men, this military operation, that by June 30th of 1944, over 850,000 men, 148,000 vehicles, 500... 70,000 tons of supplies would land on the shores of Normandy. Fighting by the brave soldiers, sailors, and airmen of the Allied forces, Western Front and the Russian forces on the Eastern Front led to defeat German Nazis. On May 4, 7th, not even a year later, 1945, German General Alfred Jodl would sign an unconditional surrender in Reims, France. Surrendering to the Allied forces. How soon we forget. It's just another date on a calendar. It's just another uh, 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 a date. We don't even acknowledge it for the most part. And we're just going to go on and on because we are human and humans forget. Uh, amen. We forget. Uh, amen. From day to day. Uh, amen. The right, uh, And so uh, we, we just go on and on. But I've come to you today not just to regenerate, uh, to, to re-engage your mind of what liberties and freedoms we have and the men and women that have given their lives for it. But I've come to tell you, God is good and God has benefits and God has blessings that he wants to bestow upon his people. 
God wants you to know that he loves you. God wants you to know that he cares for you. God wants you to, 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 to remember, amen, that he's working for you and in your behalf because he loves you today. So we turn to a psalm. Psalms 103. And here the writer writes, and he begins writing it this way, Bless the Lord. For he understood in our blessing of the Lord, it would restore our memory of the Lord's goodness. For a blessing is more than just praise. But a blessing, when you bless the Lord, you're putting your affection and your gratitude in place. When you bless the Lord and you bless his holy name, amen, you're not just uh, saying words, uh, but you are getting involved with your affections. uh, And you're also understanding with your your, your thankfulness and your gratitude for what the Lord has done in your life. Uh, Oh, I believe today that there's somebody here that could shout, amen, with the best of them, God's been good to me. God's been merciful to me. God's been wonderful to me. Amen. I am so thankful for the goodness of God. I'm so thankful for the mercy of God. I'm so thankful for the grace of God. But it's not just with gratitude. It's not just with affection. But it goes on to say, amen, here, I I will bless the Lord, amen, with all that is within me. That means my intellect. That means my emotions. That means my sentiment. That means my body, my heart, my lungs, amen, my tongue, my brain. It's all going to praise God. It's all going to bless his holy name because he's been good to me. He's been good to me. And then the psalm writer goes on to say it again. Bless the Lord. Not because he is forgetful, but because he wants to emphasize. There are things repeated in Scripture, and we won't go through all the things that are repeated in Scripture. But why is there repetition in Scripture? Not because of redundancy, but because of emphasis. My friend... Every day you wake up, you need to bless the Lord. You need to start here every day with a little time to bless the Lord. Don't you dare go through a day that you haven't taken time to remember his goodness, to remember and thank him for all he's done for you. You need to have, amen, a ritual, if you want to call it, amen, if you want to call it, amen, a a, a habit, that is fine, amen. But you need every day you get up, thank you, Lord, I'm breathing today. Thank you, Lord, I'm living today. Thank you, Lord, I've got a roof over my head. Thank you, Lord, I've got a car to drive. Thank you, Lord, I've got a family, amen, that loves me. Thank you, Lord, for your word today because it's going to lead me and guide me in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Thank you, Lord, I'm going to take time to bless his holy name. Then the writer goes on to say, and forget not his benefits. As I've already described to you, through the forgetfulness that we demonstrate just by a a, a calendar and an event that took place that's so vital to us today, so vital what they did on June 6, 1944, to our existence today. We have a tendency to forget in fact, as humans, we forget many things. Some of you may even forget where you put your keys. Some of you forget birthdays. I know, go ahead and say it. Thank God for Facebook. It reminds me, so-and-so's birthdays today. We forget events. We forget uh, 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 where we put stuff. We as humans forget. We have a tendency To forget. That's the reason why the Lord tells us and reminds us in the word. There are some scripture. uh, Moses was concerned about this forgetfulness. That's why he said in Deuteronomy 8.11. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God. 
in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. Peter was concerned that we would forget. For he said in 2 Peter 1.12, Wherefore I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them, and be established in the present truth. In fact, he was so concerned about this, he wrote it in the same epistle. The second epistle, behold, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye might be mindful of the words which were spoken by the holy prophets, of the commandments of us, the apostles of our Lord and Savior. What's he saying? I'm going to stir your way of remembering, uh, your, uh, to be able to remember, amen, what the prophets have said and what we have said about who Jesus is. Side note. There are a lot of people that have forgotten. Jude, half-brother of Jesus Christ, wrote this in Jude 1.5. I will therefore put you in remembrance, uh, though, you, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. I will put you, therefore, in a way of remembrance. We must be reminded. Thank God for Pastor today. He's reminding us. We are human. Of course, my, mom, my son, my mom used to say, for we are human and humans forget. So remind me, dear Lord. Remind me. I was hoping somebody would finish that because I can't remember it. God, remind me of that song. <laughs> remind me, God, of certain things in life. Remind me of your benefits. So for a few moments longer, if you'll just... Uh, 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 stay with me. I want to remind you of just a few things because the writer went on. I'm so glad he didn't say, just remind you. Remember, don't forget. He went on and said what not to forget. Number one, don't forget who forgiveth all thy iniquities. Aren't you thankful today that God forgives us of our iniquities? That God forgives us of our failures. That God, amen, in his infinite love and, and devotion to us, uh, amen, has made a way for us, amen, to be saved from our sins. Amen. John 3, 17 says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, uh, but, to, but that the world through him might be saved. Not to condemn, but to save the world. But to save the world. God has made a way for us to be saved. It's called the plan of salvation. It's called being born again of the water and of the spirit, John 3, 5 through 8. Amen. We, God wants you, uh, has made a way for you to be born again, to be set free of your sin, to, to be set free of your iniquities, uh, to set, be set free, amen, of the past things that you have done that are wrong. God has made a way, uh, amen. We can't forget uh, that God has made a way for us to be saved. Amen today, praise God. Uh, uh, Peter said it this way, Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Uh, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Oh, my friend, uh, amen, you need to know how to repent, uh, amen, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Why? Because he forgiveth us of our iniquities. Amen. He forgiveth of all our iniquities. How does it happen, pastor, preacher? 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we'll just confess, he's faithful and just to forgive and to cleanse us. Oh, I don't want to forget the God that forgives all my iniquities today. What a benefit. What a benefit. What a benefit. He forgives me of all my iniquities. The writer didn't stop there, but he went on to write, Who healeth all thy diseases. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. 
James wrote it this way. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of the faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Who healeth of all our diseases. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. When it seems that our lives are at the end, when we're at the end of our rope, so to speak, when we're about to drown in the midst of the storm, Brother Caleb, Jesus shows up. When your life seems to be about to be destroyed, Jesus shows up. He redeems thy life from destruction. The Bible tells us this, for thou hast delivered my soul from death. Will not thou deliver my feet from, fall, from falling, that I may walk before the Lord in the light of the living? Thou hast delivered my soul from death. And you have delivered my feet from falling, that I may walk before the God in the light of the living. Psalms uh, right, says it this way, though he fall... He shall not utterly be cast down, for the Lord upholdeth with his hand. I have been young, and, I, and now I am old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Aren't you glad he redeems our life from destruction? Goes on to say, who crowns thee with loving kindness and tender mercies? Oh, I'm thankful for this. Lamentations is a tough book. But you know what? In the midst of Lamentations, it reads this way. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Aren't you thankful for the mercies of God, the tender mercies of the Lord? Nehemiah wrote it this way. Nevertheless, for thy great mercy's sake, thou didst not utterly consume them, nor forsake them, for thou art gracious Thou art a gracious and merciful God. Aren't you thankful for his mercies? Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. He ends it this way, the writer of Psalms. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Benefits. I'm stirring our mind today. I'm stirring our mind today. Why? Because you, I don't want you to forget the benefits of living for God. I don't want you for, to forget the benefits that God has for you today. God wants you to have benefits. God wants you to have a good life. God wants to bless you. God wants, amen, you to know good things because God loves you. Then verse 5, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The psalm writer wrote it, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in, in, in him. The writer went on and wrote this, uh, Amen. But, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth, doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in a season. His leaves also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. There's a mindset in our world that says, if you love God and serve God, you can't prosper. You've got to just live a, a, a pauper's life. If you really love God, you need to learn to live without. That's not scriptural. Whatever he shall do shall prosper. Whatever you put your hand to as you're living for God, God wants to bless it. God wants to bless it. God wants you to have benefits. I am so thankful that I get paid by the hour, not as a preacher, but as a recycle truck driver. I get paid by the hour. I sure do. That helps. But you know what? There's something they add on to it. It's called benefits. I got health benefits. I've got dental benefits. I've got optical benefits. This is above and beyond my pay. Why? Because my company wants to take care of me. God's got benefits for somebody today. 
He sent me to remind you, I've got benefits for you. The blessings of the Lord, uh, Solomon said, it maketh rich and he addeth no sorrow with it. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. See, I, 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 I'm fighting right now, right now, a spirit, a concept that if I am going to follow God, I can't be rich. That's not scriptural. The love of money is the root of all evil, not the money. It's when you love money more than you love God. You love houses more than you love God. You love your fancy car more than you love God. That's an issue. But if you have a fancy home, you have a nice car, amen, you have a good job, you have a wonderful family, that's a benefit from God. God wants you to have that. That's the reason why he said in Luke 6, 38, give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Can I, can, can I just read that again? Is that all right? Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. God wants you to have benefits today. He's, he, he's designed benefits for you to enjoy today. Let's not forget the benefits of the Lord. In closing today, I got preached all that to get to this. I want to share a benefit, benefit with you that we and our world needs desperately today. In the King James Version, this word is used 429 times. If it's used 429 times, I thank God wants us to have it. And that word is peace. Peace. Jesus said it this way. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let your heart not, not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. God wants you to have peace. It's a benefit that God wants you to enjoy. He said it this way in John 16, 33, just a chapter or two later. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Oh, my. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Isn't that what we're saying today? Why? Because I have a calm assurance. What's a calm assurance? Peace. I have a peace today that everything's going to work out as long as I keep my hand in his. When I pull my hand out, I'm going to have issues, but I'll keep my hand in his. I can have calm assurance. Everything's going to be okay. Why? Because he's, he's already overcome the world. There's nothing in this world that can defeat his people because he's already defeated it. I can have peace. In fact, after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, before his ascension, he reminded his followers three different times to have peace. John 20, 19. Then the same day and evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for the fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst, saying unto them, Peace be unto you. They're fearful. They're scared. But Jesus walks and says, No. Peace. Calm assurance. Everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be okay. Because I give you my peace. He said it again. Then said Jesus to them again, peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. Peace be unto you. And then a third time, John 20, 26. After eight days again, his disciples were within, and Thomas was with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and what did he say? 
peace be unto you. Would you stand today with me? We live in a crazy, reckless world. The thing about it, this is not the first time it's been like it is. Now, in my opinion, because I didn't li- haven't lived forever, I know you think that's crazy, but I haven't. I think it's probably the worst it's ever been, but I don't know that. I know it's the worst it's ever been in my lifetime. We live in a crazy world. A lot of things out there. A lot of things screaming. A lot of things yakking. A lot of things trying to get your attention. A lot of fear. Politically, there's fear. Economically, here in the United States, there's fear. Families, marriages, there's fear. There's some people right now that that they won't get married because they're afraid of the future. Fear. Church, we can't let fear get into our heart. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. What is all that? Peace. A calm assurance. Everything's going to be all right. Because my God is in control. Nothing going on in Washington, D.C. that my God don't know about. Nothing going on at your workplace that God doesn't know about. He's the one that sits on the throne for the Most High. And he's speaking to you today. Peace be unto you. It's a benefit for his people. Peace. So I want to pray with you today. I won't embarrass you by making you all come up. Because it's already so warm. That's getting all together. It might just going to get warmer. But I do want to pray with you today. I want to pray God's peace upon you. Brother Michael, we don't see you very often, but we love you, you and your family. Wish it was closer between Oregon and Minnesota, but no. But I want to pray peace upon each and every one today. A calm assurance. It's going to be okay. Just keep your hand in his hand. He's going to lead you. He's going to guide you. He's going to be there for that midnight moment. He's going to be there. He's going to see you through. It's a benefit. It's a benefit for those that love him. It's a benefit for those that serve him. It's a benefit despite the craziness of the world. It's a benefit that we have in Christ. That's what he died for. That's what he rose again for. That's what he ascended for. So you could send forth that comforter. Jesus, we love you today. I thank you so much for each and every one that's here, both in person and on live stream. God, and I pray over each one's mind and heart and soul and body, your peace. Not the peace that the world tries to offer because it's empty. But your peace that's eternal. In the midnight hour, God, our friends can't be there, but you're there. In that moment, God, of of uncertainty, God, Lord, when we don't know the right hand from the left hand, do we go straight or do we turn or do we turn around? We, We don't know, but God, we can put our hand in yours. And know that you're going to lead us and guide us in the ways of truth and righteousness. For your name's sake, we can have peace in our heart today. Because we know that you are the God that holds our tomorrow. You're the God that holds our today. And you're the God that was with us yesterday. God, and you will always be with us. We can have that assurance today. I pray over each one, God, 
that the enemy is trying to flood their mind and soul and spirit with fear and intimidation. I rebuke God fear. I rebuke intimidation today and I replace it with the peace of God that everything's going to work out. Everything's going to be okay because my God, the Lord Jesus Christ is the one that's in control of all things and by him all things consist and everything's going to work according to his schedule and his plan and we always have that promise that promise that one of these days the last trumpet's going to sound and we which are alive and remain are going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air wherefore we can comfort one another with these words it's going to happen the rapture's going to take place we are going to a better place that he's made for us and we we can rejoice in that today. We can have that calm assurance everything's going to be okay because Jesus knows us and we know him. Jesus, in your precious name, I pray your blessing, your peace upon your people today. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Oh, let him speak to you for a few moments. I know oh, let his spirit reach you today.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can we thank you?